this iMovie tutorial, we're going to look at photos and how to import photos and use photos in your iMovie movie. I have a event called Photos, Surfing Photos, and if you want to import them, you can do it in a number of ways. I can just go straight into my finder and find the photos. So here they are here, and select them all, holding the shift key down from the first file to the last file and then drag them in to the event and drop them and get them in that way so let's just undo that command z and import them so i can go to import and import them from the actual folder so i can find the correct folder and drive so selecting my home drive, finding the folder, so it's in the documents folder, and I'm going to be surfing clips and photos. So I could take the whole lot or I could take a couple just using the command key. I can take whichever pictures I want so you don't have to take all of them. Click the first one, hold the shift, click the last one, and then import selected. And so they'll all go in that way. You can import from the photos library. So selecting the uh, photos, select all your photos, not videos or anything. And you can scroll up and down and clicking any appropriate ones. I haven't got any surfing ones in my photos library, but clicking it and just adding it directly into the timeline or dragging it into the appropriate event. So I've got some photos in there. Now, what can we do with photos? You can have an, an iMovie movie that is all photos and that with uh, some animation and some transitions, it would just look like a movie. Or you can include photos within your movie clips. So I'm going to put three photos at the beginning of this movie. So click to select and then drag it into the positions I want it at the beginning. And then Click, drag the second one in, and then the third one. And everything moves along to in include them. If I clicked and just clicked the plus sign, it will add it to the end of the timeline, which is not where I want it to go. It could go there and then I could move it. Delete. The default length of an image is four seconds. So when I click that, Go up to the inspector and it'll give me the name of the image and its duration, four seconds. And I can change that to five seconds or whatever length I like. But you can also do that on here, just dragging and left or right. So I'll keep it at four. All photos by default have Ken Burns effect enabled. When I play that, it pans and zooms automatically each photo and you can change that you can also change the way it pans and zooms so when we click on a photo and go up to the crop and you've got the different things that you can do with a photo i could change the ken burns so on the first image i want ken burns but i want to change the way it pans and zooms so there are two boxes here. You can select by clicking the start box, you select where the pan and zoom will start from, and then you click the end box to indicate where you want it to finish and in what direction. So I'd like it to start at this broad wide angle and I want it to end up in the actual title of that sign. So I'm gonna move this box till I can get it as close as possible and then note the direction, the arrow, that's the way the pan will occur. So let's look at that. It starts from the wide angle and zooms into the name of the ocean beach. Now in this picture, if we go back to crop, we could just have fit and nothing will happen to that. That's just an ordinary still image. So we'll play that one. The first one has got the Ken Burns effect and the second one is just an image. Nothing occurs with it. You've also got the ability to fade here to one into the other. 
So if I wanted those two pictures to be a cutaway, I can fade one into the other. And in the third one, you can crop to fill. So I could just take the bird and nothing else. So let's look at that. And it's just the bird, and we've taken away some of the background. So there are three things you can do to the image. Ken Burns will give you some animation, so it makes the still image move, gives it movement. And crop to fit if you just want the still image. No fit if you just want the image and nothing, uh, no animation or movement. And then you can just crop. In between these, we'd, we'd put transitions as well. So let's just do that to make it look a little better. So I'm going to put fade to black in between the three of them. And play it again. And it looks a bit better with the transition. It definitely looks a lot better in this case with Ken Burns on it. But we can do more. So in this one here, there's a little clip here of a surfer as he comes up to that top of the wave. And we could put something called picture in picture. And I want to put a picture in picture at a point where that surfer is just coming out of the water, just so you can sort of see the face of that person. Now I'm going to use a video clip. And I don't want the video clip of the picture in picture to have any sound because it's going to conflict with the sound on this clip, which I've just turned down at the moment. It's turned off so it doesn't interfere. So in my events, I've selected this two second clip. So I'm going to drag it down to where I want it to be attached to and then move it by dragging it just to the point where I think I want it to appear. Now when you put something on top of another clip, it defaults to a cutaway. So when I scrub over this, it will cut to that clip before it then goes back to the original footage. So you have to change that. Now it has audio, so I can either right click and detach the audio, or I can just turn the audio down. And because I'm not going to use the audio at all, I'm going to right click and I'm going to detach that audio completely. And now I need to change some of the settings. So I'm going to select it and then up into the toolbar up here, looking at the video overlays, and I'm going to select picture in picture. And then there are all these other things that you can do to it. So how is the picture going to be brought into the movie? We'll leave it at dissolve for the moment. How many seconds will that transition take? It's 0.5 at the moment. Do you want to have a border? So at the moment I haven't got one. I can have a small border or a large border. And the colour of that border can change. So select a different colour. And that colour, if I take the clip, the um, eyedropper, can be something that's similar to what's already on the screen. So I'll keep it that colour because it blends in with the background of that clip. And you want a shadow. Now you can also, by dragging the handles, make it bigger or smaller and move it to a different position. So I'm going to leave it here. And then when you're happy with those settings, click the tick, apply the settings, and then play it. So I scrub over it to play it. It zooms in and out. You can make it the clip longer so trim or extend it so I'm going to drag the edges to make that a little bit bigger make three seconds and just move it over the, over there a little bit and then scrub over it again and it's going to be a longer clip longer zooms in and out and you you can just move it if it's too big just select it again picture in picture move it about Change the transition so this one's a zoom, still picture and picture zooms in and out. And the, uh, the length of that transition might have to be increased. Now you can do it from by clicking that, select the overlay, you just change this section here to the amount of seconds you want that zoom transition to occur, or you can do it on the, on the actual clip itself. 
You drag them in, it's going to go for a 0.8 second, which is just a longer transition to zoom in and out. And the third one, third type of transition is a swap. It swaps the footage on the bottom of the timeline becomes the picture in picture, and the picture in picture is the main image. So it goes there, the footage at the bottom is being swapped for the picture in picture, and then it just goes back again. Pretty good for some emphasis. Put another one, double click, drag it down, put it into that position, just turn the sound down, scrub through. And if I grab another photo, so it could be some crowds on the beach, drag it on top and make that side by side. The movie clip plays and the image is there side by side. And again, we might put that further over. And you can indicate which side you want it to go on. So I think I'd like it to go on the right side. Now how do you want to make, like you can change a bit of the angle there. So as it comes across, the footage is playing and then it'll cut back to a, a side by side just for a minute. So you could have a movie which is just all images and dragging them all in. And each one, as it starts, there's some image there. It's got Ken Burns as a default, but you can change that or you could choose any of the picture types. So fits, just put the picture in, crop it, Ken Burns where you can tweak it. You can also, you know what that is, you can rotate images here. So if I click that one, I can rotate it. Reset. Whenever you're happy, you apply the adjustment. If you want to do a freeze frame, could add that as a separate image. If I want to take a freeze frame, I click in that clip and split it. And then right click and add a freeze frame. So this is the freeze frame here. Four second freeze frame. And I can then move that, so let, double click to select it, and I'm going to move that down the end. And again, as an image, it doesn't have the default Ken Burns. I can go and put Ken Burns on that by going into crop and putting it on myself. So finishing, I set, click on the, the end and finishing on this section here, apply it. So it zooms in on that surfer. In this tutorial, we looked at animating images and all the different effects that you can do with an image.